also talking tonight about th- this lady, if you may have seen the, the story in the papers today, uh, once a troubled teenager, over 50 convictions for assault and battery, uh, pretty much in and out of prison between the ages of 13 and 18. She's turned it round. She's uh, about to graduate with a first class honours degree. And then she's been accepted to study a master's degree as well. Uh, National Union of Students have called her or awarded her the Student of the Year prize. And she's in the papers today, pretty proud of what she's done. Have you turned your life around? What was it that, that made that happen? What triggered the big change for you? 03453 Christopher Stacey works for Unlock, which is a charity that helps people with convictions. And Christopher, good evening, first of all. Good evening. Um, listening to that story of, of Natalie Atkinson, the Student of the Year, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can reson- it resonates certainly with you. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic for Natalie and it's great that she's sort of been so open and uh, that there's so much positivity around her because people don't see that enough, both uh, society more generally and also people who have convictions themselves. Often they get so bogged down with feeling like they're not given second chances. So to hear of people like Natalie, um, I've been in a similar position in the past. I've got a criminal record. Um, I've been to university and and, and and done a degree and, and sort of moved on from that so yeah it's a great great story um, fantastic that she's got out there and it's got get, get, getting so much coverage when you've got the criminal record i suppose there is a point where it could just all go one way because you feel perhaps nobody's going to take you seriously and the only solution is to carry on committing crime um, I, th- I think that's certainly uh, that's certainly an option. I think when you get to the stage like where Natalie has got to now, and like so many other people, they've they've dealt with um, the things that they were doing wrong, and they've changed their life, and they're not committing crime anymore, and they're doing things more positive. Uh, I think one of the issues is that for people like Natalie, um, it will never go away what she's done wrong, and and that will stick with her for the rest of her life, and. One of the, one of the issues, and I, I was only this evening reading an email that we've had through into our helpline today from somebody who 30 years ago um, got a conviction for burglary, and this this chap has a has a, has a degree in teaching, um, and he wants to be a teacher, but no one will give him a job because that's there from 30 years ago. Because that's there from 30 years ago. So I think it, it's great that people do give people second chances and that they're given that opportunity but one of the problems is that people can never let let this go and uh, people will never leave it behind them it is in many ways a a life sentence and and, and some people would agree with that and say well that's part of the punishment Um, but to a lot of people you know Natalie myself this chap I was talking about served their punishment done their time either in prison or, 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 or in the community serving a sentence and now just trying to get on with their life um, and that that's essentially why Unlock exists because as a charity we're seeing people daily who have criminal convictions they've dealt with what they did wrong they're now a law-abiding person and they're struggling they're struggling to reach the potential that they could otherwise reach and what if, if we take it back to yourself obviously you said you'd had some conviction what was the point that that turnaround happened for you can you remember what sparked that um, it wasn't really a turnaround moment for me. I, I went through quite a difficult stage in my life where I made some stupid decisions. Um, I didn't really have to reform, in a sense. It was a period of my life where I was just stupid. I was young, I was 18, 19, made some mistakes. I was at university at the time, and I could have easily dropped out of university and given all of that up. Um, I didn't. I stuck by it. I, I couldn't go on to do the thing that I wanted to do, which was work in the legal profession, uh, which is what I've got a degree in, but I've adjusted and now I work for a charity that helps other people with convictions. But even for me, you know, there are many doors that are now closed to me and and I have no doubt that luckily I work for an employer where it actually helps to have a criminal record, but there's not many jobs out there like that. You've turned turned it to your advantage in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people do. You know, Natalie is doing a, uh, she's done a degree in criminology. She's now doing a, a master's in criminology and I have no doubt that she will be very good working within the sector but part part of her shouldn't have to do that and part of me shouldn't have to do that we should just be able to at a point leave that behind us and just go for any old job that we think we're the best person for and we should be judged first and foremost on whether we're good at the job yeah i think you know most people could say at the age of 18 they've done some stupid things yeah absolutely. Um, and it's it's a shame when you know your life is affected by that 
Absolutely. And I think when it comes to employment, that's one of the biggest areas that people with convictions struggle with. And from an employer's perspective, more often than not, they just want the best person for the job. But when they see things on people's records, no matter how long ago it was, that causes them a problem. Even if it's not them, you know, it causes their managers or their customers, or they feel like it causes them a problem. Um, and so we have we have got this problem here. I mean, we're 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 part of a campaign called Ban the Bot which is about how employers deal with criminal convictions on application forms and often employers just use the tick against criminal convictions as a reason to refuse somebody without knowing any of the circumstance behind it it's literally a box being ticked because it's a natural reaction you see one person without and one person with a conviction you're going to go for the person without Hmm. now part of what we're saying and part of this ban the box campaign is about first and foremost as employers look at whether they're the best person for the job. If they are, yes, then look at their criminal record and does that cause any problems at that stage. But firstly, let people like Natalie um, compete firstly on a level playing field and prove that they're the best person for the job. When you're turning things around, uh, you say, you know, you pretty much manage that yourself. Was the support out there from other people when you realised that some of these silly mistakes were going to hang around your neck for, for many, many years onwards? Did, did um, you, was there much support around for you to help turn things? Well, you say you didn't really need to majorly turn it around. But... I, think, I think it depends on the individual and it depends on the seriousness. So for people who are in prison and coming out of prison or serving a sentence in the community, there are some things out there that can help. When I served my sentence, um, there wasn't much that could have helped me, to be honest. I was I was educated. I, I was doing a, a degree at university. Nobody could really help me in that sense. And I was, to an extent, left on my own to get on with things because I wasn't a risk of reoffending. I think for people who are going through that phase of trying to deal with why they have done what they've done maybe time and time again, there is help out there. But there does come a point, and this is partly the reason Unlock exists really which is you become a there comes a point where you're just left to be a person you know Jim um, who has a criminal record and you sort of left to get on with your life which to an extent is a good thing but then you are left on your own in lots of ways and there isn't really much support out there and, and not a lot of people really understand what it's like and I suppose a record. I suppose without the, the help or seeing the light at the end of the tunnel it could almost become a self-fulfilling prophecy because you think well I'm hitting my head against a brick wall here people are treating me as if I'm going to reoffend. you could da- go down that route you could I think there's also a much greater number of people that just generally give up on life and I don't mean that they go on and commit more crime they just you know they live a life um, on benefits or in very low paid jobs when they could do so much more one of the staggering stats out there is that a quarter of people on out of work benefits have had a conviction in the last 10 years which is a massive number of people and I have no doubt that a lot of the reason for that is that people just get fed up of the rejection that they face um, so, uh, you know, that, that's a bit of the negative side. I think part of the positive is people like Natalie being able to go out there and say, look, this is what I've done. Uh, and, and, and look, other people can do this. Universities, education, great way of showing how you change your life. Um, but to some people, and even to Natalie, it, you know, that her criminal record will never go away and it will still, in some ways, cause her problems and 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 we've got to look at ways of of, of trying to solve some of those problems so that people can ultimately become good positive members of society good to talk to you christopher um it's unlock.org.uk your charity site so people want to find out more information about the charity for people with convictions uh thanks nice thank you you. Uh, that's christopher stacy